Welcome to UK Talent. It's your boy Hulk. I'm here to have a little chat with the legendary Daddy Ernie. Welcome to UK Talent. Big up UK Talent every nice time. you on the show, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, just uh, people who don't know, it's a legendary DJ right here who obviously introduced the scene to the UK in a major way. Um, I've got a few questions for you. Yeah, man. Um, so, I mean, What's the earliest memory you have of beginning to DJ and like what inspired you to do that? Well, my inspiration was my old man still, you know, because, you know, the first sort of people who came from the Caribbean, Sunday was a staple diet in most Caribbean house. They had their little noon stop gram and thing like that. And, you know, they used to play religiously Sunday mornings used to be music. But my old man had a sound system, you know, early sound system called Tarzan. So there was always music in the house, you know, so I just brought up on some serious Fats Domino, Ace Cannon, um, early Toots and the Maytails, those kind of people, you know, so my inspiration was, I don't know, from my sense really, it was just music, you know, so I don't know, I never really set out to become a DJ as such. But um, I suppose because it was around us at a young age, we just kind of fell into it, you know? Yeah. Okay, and um, so when did you join the King Trojan Sound System and how did that kind of come about and shape your career? For? Well, what happened, you know, my first sort of, um, I went to a Scouts um, jumble sale and in them days we used to have gramophones, you know, and I don't know if you know a gramophone, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you used to wind them up at the yeah, side. Yeah, the you know? yeah, record player with the big trumpet looking yes, thing. Yes, like. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I bought one from a jumbo cell, I think it cost two pence. And um, I bought it on the night and we wind up this thing and was playing the records and kind of scratch up the whole of the old man's records, you know, so <laughs> free out the window, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I remember he was crying, man. Um, and then after that now, we kind of got this, um, his master's voice um, kind of little system with a, uh, a deck and two speakers in it and we kind of connected up two other speakers to make four and that was my first sort of um, initiation into having a system so like at school really in our, in our early teenagers here everybody used to kind of follow a sound system and children had a record label, Trojan record label, and um, they had a sound, of course, that represented the label. And they used to play at a place called Burns in, in Cricklewood Broadway. So, you know, Friday nights, them days, I mean, there was untold places that you could go, youth clubs and places like that. But Friday night, you used to have a club called Metro in Labrador Grove, um, Kingfishers in um, Neasden, and uh, a place in Mortimer Road called Mortimer Youth Club. So every Friday we used to go either or either of those places, but come about 11 o'clock now, everybody used to head to, head to Burton's to listen to Trojan, because you know, if you wanted to hear the big tunes then and all the latest tunes, you had to be at Burton's on a, on a Friday night. And just by going there, you used to go early, lift up the sound to get free admission to get in there and things like that, you know what I mean? And you, everyone, you just used to have a little clique we just used to follow the sound and that's how we kind of got involved in the whole Trojan sound movement, you know what I mean? Which at the time, kind of West London had Trojan, they had a sound called the People Sound, which was like the bigger man then. And you had um, Little Roy and Sputnik and they, there were so many sounds, but Trojan was like our age group, you know what I mean? So we kind of clicked, clicked onto that sound there, you know, and that was our sound, that's the sound we used to follow. So it was just kind of like a natural take into it, really. Yeah, 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 you know, and that was the girl's sound and the mother's yeah. sound, and, <laughs> yeah. you know, everything like that. So, yeah, it, it, it was some good times, man. You used to have sounds like Success that used to play on a Thursday night at a place called Spinners up in Wembley. So we used to go up there on a Thursday night. It was part of that as well. You know, it wasn't really, you used to have large coups as well. It was kind of the rebel sound at them times, you know. So, them days, there was nothing for a man to be linked to individual sounds, but everybody had their sound and our sound was kind of Trojan, you know what I mean? And would you say like, <clears throat> compared to like dances nowadays and stuff, is there any that you still have, you reckon still have a similar vibe 
to the dancers back then? No, 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 them days there, it was it was really peace and love. Mm. Not saying that you know it, there's not peace and love now, mm. but it was a different kind of peace and love. Maybe because we was young and we was growing up, we was carefree. You know, we just was out to enjoy ourselves and have a good time. Mm. And the vibes then was the whole music scene was a kind of different scene because it was evolving. Mm. You know what I mean? So we was kind of at the beginning of it, and it was like an a embryo, and it just grew and grew and grew mm. to what it is today. Um, and um, so you was on the LWR? Yeah, yeah, that was my first. You know, we had we had a sound system that me and my friends them from school. My brother, a guy called um, Harold Niles, who plays on um, Roots FM now, and my good my bona fide brethren Grant, who he, who he started out of sound as well in his in his early years. We kind of come together and got a sound sound. Um, in our early teens, and we called it President Downbeat. You know, that was like our first sound that we owned, and um, yeah, it was kind of popular, and, and um, it was good times. We had good times with that sound, and you know, we used to play at parties, and it used to blow up, <laughs> and then we just used to get it fixed and come back again. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know, you'd find that a lot of youths at them times they had sound systems as well. You know, so. It was very competitive, mm -hmm. you know, you used to be on the top of your game. So as we kind of went through our teenager years and, and that, um, funny, I kind of met up with Tim Westwood, okay. you know what I mean? And um, although me and him ain't great friends now, there's a kind of a, a, a distant respect, you know? Okay. And um, he was playing on LWR at the time, okay. which was the first black on radio station, it was kind of, it was owned by a, a guy called Zach. Me and him are still good friends up to today. Um, and I always give him props, you know, because Westwood brought me over there and um, he said, yeah man, he's my boy and, you know, get him on the radio and he kind of give me a little one show. So kind of Westwood kind of put you on? Like, yeah, oh, no, definitely, as yeah. far as radio is concerned, you know, he was the one who brought me over to LWR and introduced me to Zach and the whole team. And had a, a, a squad, a team called the Reggae Squad, of which I was kind of the, the forefront of it. it. Was me, Zach, and his brother called Fuzzy D, you know. And um, we used to play at trains. That was our regular uh, Saturday night gig over in Amherst Road. And Thursday night we used to play at a place called Bentley's, which was down in um, Canning Town, you know. And in them days, that it was it was early days of. What was what now is community, but it was pirate radio. Was thinking, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was the early days, and, and LWR was really you had to be there. It was it was an unbelievable force. You know what I mean? We used to play, we you know play gigs, thirty thousand people and twenty thousand people. You know, um, we used to play at a place called Woodgrange Road over in East London, an indoor arena. arena they used to have skating there, you know, regular. LWR all dayers to the track anywhere 10, 15,000 outdoor events. It was just kind of phenomenal, you know. And then you had Kiss, which was kind of the, the kind of middle class soul, la di da crew, but the real street station was LWR, you know what I mean? And we was there for about, I don't know, we probably was there for about eight years at LWR. Um, and then I don't know, we never fell out or nothing. I just kind of decided that I wanted to come back over to West, you know? Mm -hmm. Because my radio name really was made in South London with LWR. Um, and a lot of people thought I was born and I grew up there and I lived there, but I was really Westman still, you know what I mean? But South London kind of took to me, you know what I mean? I give thanks for that because I know some heavy people in, in South London, you know what I mean? And we kind of come back to West and um, end up on a station called Time FM which was in Harlesden High Street and was there for about, I don't know, we'd done a couple of years on Time FM. It was good vibes as well. Then the Radio Authority in their infinite wisdom decided that they were going to give out some official license and they said, oh, but you can't be on Pirates, you have to come off Pirate Stations. Um, and being that I wanted to move up a grade, I came off. But um, later down you found that man still stayed on Pyro and still got on legal radio station. But I came off and then the opportunity came up to, to get onto Choice FM, which was uh, the next, the first legal 
from the Black Raider station. That was in around about 1990, 1991, in the London, um, Holy Bait site, first London Black station in the heart of Brixton. Everything is going on, you know what I mean? Um, R&B is just beginning. The likes of Boys to Men, Joe to see Mary J. Blige, the whole crew from that era. Um, reggae, uh, we've sort of gone through the dance or the computer age, because the computer age started around about 85. And, you know, we've we sort of gone through that era and it was 1990 and there's a different vibe. Buju had come, Luciana, all them kind of man was around, you know. We was right there at the beginning, you know, and it was, um, once again, it was just a heavy experience. Was you like conscious of the fact that obviously with LWR and you know uh, being obviously the first black home radio in, in the UK and obviously Choice being the first legal, um, like, was you conscious that you was actually as a young man part of, um, like responsible for introducing this kind of culture to the UK? Like, did you realise what you was a part of? Did you actually look at it like the power that you, you actually had at the time? Well, I did, you know, because the thing was, you know, we got on, LW, um, on, on Choice FM and they gave me five days a week, mm. which was unbelievable, you know, and it was prime time as well. It was seven till nine in the evening. Um, on a, weren't a London-wide station. It was basically a South London station. But you know the, the the power the power of it it's filtered out into like West London and North London, so it had you know a, a reasonable coverage. And um, I thought, man, I'm on this thing five days a week, man, and it's just non-stop, and the tunes are heavy, and we're dealing with it the right way. So I was kind of I was, you know, I, I said to myself, boy, I've got a certain amount of responsibility here mm. to kind of deliver this music that we love. You know, so um, yeah, it was it was a lot on my shoulder, but at the same time, we just rolled with it. You know, what I mean, we never let it weigh us down or nothing like that. We just rolled with it, and you know, it gave me the opportunity to kind of meet some of my boyhood heroes. You know, people like Dennis Brown, Gregory Isaac, the legendary Uroy, all these people, Delroy Wilson, who, who as youths we was listening to in the dance, who was buying their records, and hey, this brother from Arlesden kind of just started interviewing them and they became like friends, you know what I mean? So yeah man, it was just a wicked experience. And obviously you've been an active DJ for a long time now and you're still active now. Um, what, how would you say the transition between like vinyl and CD and stuff affected the whole, the whole movie? Well, um, I think what happened really is that the, the reggae industry was a bit late endorsing the whole, getting to grips with the whole computer age. You know, when the, the, the R&B artists, them, they kind of, they had all big companies, you know, you had your Warners and your EMIs and people like that, so obviously they were on it straight away. But the, the reggae industry compared to like the R&B and the hip hop and things like that, it was a lot smaller. Um, and uncontrollable, you know what I mean? Even today, yeah. there's a certain element of it that you can't really control. Probably that's to its detriment, actually, you know? But um, I think we was a little bit slow on the uptake, and when we realised what happened, the, the computer age and the CD age had kind of gone like three, three miles down the road, and we was kind of still in the starting block. So we had some catching up to do, you know what I mean? But like always, you know, reggae's, reggae's a very powerful music, you know. The, I always say that the two things in the Caribbean that really sets us apart is, is reggae and soca. You know, no matter what kind of black music that comes along, the staple thing is always reggae and soca. You know, hip-hop evolved from reggae, you know. Um, Cool Herc was the first one who left America, left Jamaica and went down to, to America and introduced the whole sound system culture and the DJ culture to America and hip hop has evolved from there. Hip hop, vast amount of money behind it, reggae, hardly any money so you know it was in the big apple so it kind of just took off. Um, if reggae had half of that they wouldn't be able to touch it and I think it's, it's um, 
is something that they probably know, the powers that be knows, that if they ever let this music that comes from an island with three million people really express itself, they would have a problem, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and how do you feel like up and coming DJs and stuff at the moment, do you feel like they are as knowledgeable about music in general? And, you know, what do you think the difference is between DJs when you was coming up and DJs now coming up? Um, when you say DJs, radio presenters or, or mic MCs? Um, you know, like, just basically selectors in the dance in and the stuff dance. like that. Um, I think, to tell you the honest truth, I'm a bit disappointed with the state of, like, the community stations on the strength that the, the avenues that are open to them with the technology that they've got at their disposal I don't think they're using it the way that they should you know, when, when, I mean when we first started you know, I remember being up on top of a, a building in Crystal Palace which is the highest point of South London it's probably the highest point in London actually and um, being up there with, you know putting up a, a 30 foot area and the wind's blowing and the, the aerial pole is swinging about and the police is downstairs and you're going hold on a minute hold on you know man's up there with big sort of iron things battening it down and things like that nowadays you don't really need to do that you got microwaves and things like that so you know there is the difference just there um and i think what i find with a lot of the presenters now they're kind of they're very narrow-minded they kind of broadcast to their friends. So you get a man on the radio saying, big up my spa down in the barber shop down the road, and big up, you know, Antoinette in the hairdresser, and big up a man on the corner and all that. And it's a lot bigger than that because when you're on radio, you don't know who you're broadcasting to. So you have to sound professional. So if somebody goes like that on the dial, you know, then they hear it. And if it's coming over properly, they're likely to stick to it. If they hear somebody on there and they go, yeah, my, 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 my bridge on the wall, I'm really, really, I'm thinking, ah, oh, that's me. I'm like, what's this? And they just lick it off. So, you know, I, I'm a bit disappointed, really. I think they could really kind of enhance it even more and just take it up on a professional level. Plus, we never really had no guidelines when we first started or no stations that we could say, yeah, we could make our station sound like that station but better now you can listen to a station and get ideas from other stations and implement it in your own station you know what i mean so from that point of view i'm i'm, I'm disappointed but you know you've got to start somewhere so hopefully it'll get better yeah, and um <clears throat> what do you wish like if you could go back to the Daddy only that started your career mm. and you could tell him something that was going to help him like just what would it be that one gem of advice that you would give yourself back then? Um, whew, that I would give myself personally? Mm. Boy, I From what you're not taking into consideration you've gone through like a nice amount of your career now and you've got to where you are, mm -hmm. if there's anything you could take from that and go back and sort of either warn yourself about or maybe encourage yourself to do differently? Boy, you know something? I don't think I would have done anything different in terms of uh, broadcasting, you know? Because I think the way i kind of done it, I'm kind of satisfied with it. My only disappointment is that, you know, um, through circumstances, not of my own making, you know, we, we're not on five days a week now because I think that we deserve that platform to be on five days a week. You know, whether it's me or somebody else, but I think we've got the music, we've got the knowledge, people like it, you know, it's very popular. So I think it deserves that platform um, to be on five days a week. Um, my, my kind of goal was to get on, you know, I got onto Choice. I'd have loved to have been on Radio One. You know, I did, uh, I never had the opportunity. I went for an interview there. I don't know, about 95, 96. And I always remember the interview, you know, I went into broadcasting house and I was in the lift and, and a, a gentleman came in the lift. I knew him as well. And um, he said to me, oh, you know, where are you going? I said, oh, I'm going upstairs for, for an interview. He said, oh, what do you do? Um, I said, oh, I play reggae music, you know. He says, oh, I love Bob Marley. Now, when somebody says that to me, it's like they're patronising me because they just say, you know, I love Bob Marley because they know Bob Marley, but reggae is a lot more than Bob Marley. 
you know. So, um, you know, I went, I went and I had the interview and, you know, at the time, we was all, you know, I was, what was I? I must have been my mid-30s, you know, and I had a house, I had a car, I had all what you would call the, the little knickknacks and things like that, you know. So I went into the interview and I always got the notion that people think that they can buy you, you know, and I want one to be bought. Know, so I went into the meeting and you know I was on choice at the time I was doing seven till nine prime time in London and um, the offer was to do a show like I don't know one till two or one till three or something like that probably Goldfinger what Goldfinger probably took that slot well yeah after yeah. Westwood yeah 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 he, he that, I think that was the slot that they had and uh, you know I said to the the, the person the lady you know um, you know what you're offering me. Because, you know, I've got a house, I've got a car, I've got this, I've got that, you know, so it's not a thing that I'm going to be coming on here for the money or anything like that, you know. Um, and I always remember she kind of went in the chair like this and straightened up and I thought, yeah, right, but this ain't going much further. And I didn't get that gig. But I would have loved to have been on Radio 1 simply because the opportunity to broadcast to the whole country. You know what I mean? But there's, that aside, I'm kind of happy with my lot, you know. I'd still love to be on. I, I mean, I'm still on choice now. One, two, three on a Monday morning. I'd have loved to have been on a better time, you know. But um, give thanks, we're still there, so we do what we got to do. Of course. Yeah. And obviously now, you know, the young, the young people are listening to the radio more, and they've got to support the new genres and stuff that's coming out, and they try and give them the prime time slots now. So they're gonna, it's going to be harder for them. Reggae and stuff. Well, you can never well, be. It's always competing, isn't it? Yeah, but you can never be experienced, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, nothing stays the same forever and ever. But I still think we have got some mileage. Yeah. We've yeah. still got some traction, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it's that, that's the only thing that I'm a bit disappointed in, really. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't really. I don't think I'd really do it any different. And plus, you know, we've had. I've had the opportunity to bring a few youths through, like Silver Star. They used to um, do a little Wednesday night mix for me. They ended up at one extra. Um, and we had um, another set of lads as well. Oh, shame on me, I forgot their name. They, um, they came on and they used to do a little one mix on the program as well. And they've gone on to do what they're doing now. Um, they were on choice for a little short period of time. Um, the only disappointment with them is that when they got that gig, it was actually part of the, the, the five there a week, what they've done, they gave me two, they gave them one, and they gave somebody else two, and I said to them at the time, I don't think these guys are ready, that weren't being bad mine, but they were my boys and I knew, you know what I mean, and we was kind of bringing them, you know what I mean, and they kind of got that gig, and they kind of, um, it didn't work out for them, but they're still playing out, they're still doing their things, like, hey, you never know, they might come round again, you know? Jay's a good, like, sort of role model that uh, the current DJs and stuff could look up to that you think, you know, come from this good stock as well that come from the old school. Um, well, you've got, uh, you got, you got, um... I mean, there's not many people, you know, it's competitive yeah. as a DJ to still be doing it now, mm. as back, you know, when yeah, like LWR and stuff like that. Yeah, I think, I think we've probably got too many DJs at the moment. Yeah. Now, this is because of the coming of the, the, the computer age, mm. you know, not being funny, but anybody can be a DJ, you just go and... It's all synchronised mixing and yeah, press the button, button and, and, and you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, um, you know, it, it, I use... When I go on the computer and I'm doing editing, you know, you reuse cool edit. Mm -hmm. But I can remember the time when you used to have a tape and you used to have to cut out a piece of the tape and put it around your neck and join it up and things like that, you know what I mean? So there's a lot more at disposal. But, there, you know, there's a couple of DJs, like you've got this you called Hooligan who's on Bang FM, which he, he's pretty good. I think he, he, somewhere down the road, if he gets the chance, he probably could um, get on radio. You know, you've got Robo Ranks who's at one extra, who's holding it down tough. Um, another DJ who was on choice for a while. I was asked at, when before he came on, um, he was on at Unique, and I was asked what, you know, what I thought of, of Robo Ranks. I said, yeah, man, bring him in, he's a, he's a good DJ. You know what I mean? He's gone on to one extra. Um, Silver Star, although they're not on any um, 
official radio station in the UK. They do a lot of work in Africa um, and they do a lot of their stuff online as well. So they're doing their thing, they're, they're good. Um, I think sort of, there's a few, there's a few. There's a lot of stations, I don't get the opportunity to hear all of them, but those those that I've mentioned, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm around them and I know them. You know, the Silver Stars and Hooligan and that, you know, Hooligan especially I've watched him kind of grow with the Winner Road Show, you know, and he's come out and he's doing his thing, you know, so, um, you know, there's a few of them, but it's, it's, um, it's not as easy as people think, you know what I mean, you've got to, to really get into what you call the corporate world, you have to kind of have a vision and you have to be, kind of have to be geared for it, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, if you really want it, you've got to really put yourself out there and, and go for it. Um, and you've got to take sort of instructions, things like that. People, some people don't like doing that, mm. you know, so that's to their detriment. But, you know, I think that we yeah, yeah, in a few, in a few years time, there'll be a few more coming through. And um, last but not least, what, what are you doing at the moment and what's to come in the future for Daddy Well, at the moment we're kind of, you know, we're still DJing, like I said, we're still on choice. Um, we've just started doing um, an audience with Daddy Ernie, which is something that me and my friends are doing at the Tabernacle in Labrador Grove. It's kind of a live show in front of uh, a live audience where we interview people from the community who um, people know them. You know, we've done National Waters, we've done um, My Girl from Strictly Come Dancing. Um, how can I forget her name? Alicia Dixon. Alicia Dixon. Yeah. We've had her on there. We've had Angela Mud. We've got a whole raft of people who you're not going to see on the beep yeah. and you're not going to see um, on these various platforms. And if you do, not well, I can't, it's not disrespect, but the presenters don't really know how to. They ask some standard questions, yeah. you know, like, you know, I'll have Alicia and I'll ask a boy, you cook some rice and pizza, yeah, yeah, yeah. them kind of vibes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so we started doing that and we're doing four of them a year and they've been very popular. Um, so that's another thing that the internet has allowed us, we can record that and put it up on the internet. Um, and um, I don't know, we, we, we're kind of working at that to see where we're going to go with that. Because you know we're getting on, <laughs> so you know the time might come where I might not want to be in and out of the clubs all the time. Yeah. You know? So I have to kind of look at uh, another kind of avenue, and that is the main thing at the moment. But um, you know it's all good. It's all good. We're still here. You know we're still making some noise. Um, I don't know what the future holds. You know I'd like to think that they might ring me up one day from church and say, you know what, I'm going to give you back in five days where I'm going to give you a Sunday afternoon prime time or something like that but we don't know where we take each day as it comes that's it man and, uh, one more time tell the viewers what time they can catch you on the radio well you can catch you on choice one till three every Monday morning um, and if not you know with once again with the advent of the um, computer they've got the service that you can listen back so we're on Mixcloud dot com forward slash choice fm and uh, if you go to the choice fm website they've got a listen back feature on there you just click on uh listen live and then listen again and you get the drop down box and you just scroll down whatever show uh, you want to listen to they're there for seven days so you can kind of listen to it at your leisure at home and you, there's foolishness on the telly and that you can just click on and we're there you know what i mean so yeah that's right, me well, thanks for I'll Coming respect you. Yeah, man, every time, man, you know. We've had Daddy Ernie, he's a legend. If you don't know about him, make sure you check out his show on Choice FM. Do your history. Um, again, thanks for coming. Yeah, man, no problem. UK talent, keep it locked. Boom.